Hello guys, I'm back with a new video for you. You need to know how to use an SD card in your project because it's important for storing data. Today, I'll show you how. I have a board with an SD connector, and I'll use it for this demonstration. First, I need to enable SWD for debugging. Next, I need to enable the SDIO peripheral. As you can see, there are many options. In the old cube, I used SDIO 4 bit for my project, but after updating CubeMX, it stopped working. I couldn't figure out why. So for this project, I selected 1 bit mode. It works, but with a lower data transfer rate. Here, I use a clock divider factor to divide the clock of the SD peripheral. As you can see, you can calculate it using this formula. The next step is to enable RxDMA and TxDMA. Please take a look at all the DMA configurations, they should look like this. All data widths should be set to Word, and the Increment Address option should be selected. Then, I need to enable the SD card FATFS. I got an error in the clock configuration after enabling SDIO. I opened the tab and fixed it. There is a warning on the Platform Settings tab. Let's open it and fix it. It needs another pin to detect whether the SD card is inserted in the socket. I can assign a GPIO as an input for this purpose. Now, I selected that pin in the platform settings. Here is the schematic for the SD IO connection. Don't forget the pull up resistor and bypass capacitor. This pin is connected to our detect pin. It is a switch inside the socket. When the SD card is inserted, it connects to ground. Now, let's take a look at the other configurations of the FAT file system. There is a very important option, by default, the long file name feature is disabled. If you need it, you have to enable it. I set the max sector size to 4096 for more flexibility. As you can see, you can enable or disable many other options that influence the generated code size and speed. I didn't change the others and generated the code to start the test. As you can see, all the files related to the FAT file system have been added to the project. Now, I'll open fatfs.c to take a look inside. This function is automatically added during the CubeMX initialization process. In the configuration, I selected dynamic fat time, so I need to add some code here. In a real project, we need to enable RTC, read the time from it, and use those values inside this function. This is necessary because the FAT file system requires the current date and time to store in the file information when writing to a file or directory. But for now, I set constant values to show you how to set those values. Now, I can add the test code in the main file. FATFS is included by CubeMX. In the first step, I need to mount the SD card. I declared a variable to store the latest result of the FAT file system functions. The first parameter is the FAT structure, which is declared by CubeMX, so there's no need to declare it manually. Also, the second parameter is the path for the SD card, which is declared as well. The third parameter is the force function to mount the SD card now. I check the return value of this function, if it is ok, then I open a new file to write data into it. 
The first parameter of the open function is the file structure, which is also declared by cubemx. The second parameter is the path of the file. The third parameter is the mode for opening the file. You can select one of those modes or more than one using the OR operator. I have selected Open Always and Write mode. If the result is OK, then I write my data into it. Similar to the open function, the first parameter is the file structure. The second parameter can be a pointer or the text that I want to write into the file. The third parameter is the length of the data in bytes. The fourth one returns how many bytes were written successfully. I strongly suggest closing the file after any operation. To read from the file, I need to change the mode to read. I need a buffer for storing the read data. So I declared it here as a global variable. Oh, I have a problem here. Let's see what happened. I made a mistake. The fourth parameter is a pointer. Now it is correct. Let's compile and debug the project. As you can see, the result is OK. Now, we can check the contents of the buffer variable to see if the read data is correct. Yes, this is exactly what we wrote before in the file. If you found my video helpful, please support me on social media. Thank you, and goodbye until the next video.